saucy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Nicholas Sarwark, chairman of the Libertarian National Committee. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of LPTV. Uh, I know you're all probably waiting to find out what it is that we uh, wanted you in here for. I know there's been a lot of speculation online. So uh, I'm not going to go too far in keeping that suspense up. One of the things the Libertarian Party has been leading on uh, during the COVID-19 crisis is the need to have good testing. Uh, we raised the alarm back at um, you know March 12th with the fact that the FDA had been blocking testing, that uh, they had told Dr. Helen Chu of the Seattle flu study to stop doing tests even though she had found the COVID-19 uh, cluster here in the United States and that we had community spread. We had heard from doctors who were Libertarian Party members that even though they were working with COVID-19 patients, there was a limited amount of tests because the FDA and the CDC had bungled the procedure, were blocking the importation of working tests from overseas, and it generally just been in the way. Um, in this crisis, the FDA has not done anything useful except for these emergency authorizations where they get out of the way of people trying to help. You know, if we look in the crisis to look for the helpers and try and help the helpers, the FDA has done the opposite of it. And that's why the Libertarian Party has called for the FDA to just get out of the way for the duration of the pandemic, that they should just basically close up shop and approve anything, approve masks, approve tests, all of it. The other thing we've talked about is how local governments need to be doing testing of people in their community to find out how far the virus has spread in our society so that we have the information to make good choices. So tonight we're uh, joined by Kara Schultz. She is a city council member in Burnsville, Minnesota. Uh, she also is a contractor for the National Party. Kara, welcome to Thank LPTV. You very much. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. So Kara has in her hot little hands a rapid COVID-19 test produced by um, ProMed Rapid Testing, a division of Sober Holdings, LLC. Mm -hmm. And this is a self-serve test. This is a test that any individual can use at home. It requires the same amount of stuff as a, a diabetic blood test. You basically prick your finger, you take a little bit of blood, you use a buffering solution, and then you can read it in the same way that you could read an at-home pregnancy test. And it will tell you whether or not you have uh, COVID-19 infection actively and whether or not you've already had a COVID-19 infection that you've overcome and have the antibodies that show that you have some level of immunity. That's been one of the biggest areas of speculation around this whole thing is a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I had a cough or a cold back in February. Did I have it? I don't know if I had it. Um, this will let people know that. And what Kara is going to do, she's received one of these tests as, um, can you tell us Kara, how you received this test and what's going on with it? Sure. So I, when I first heard about these types of tests, um, I really wanted to track them down. Uh, you know, my thought is if we can get better information, you know, you can you can make better decisions, um, both as individuals and as policymakers. And I thought how powerful this would be for our first responders to have a test like this that perhaps at every shift, you know, they could take that and for their own peace of mind or, you know, for knowing whether they should be um, engaging in work or seeking further medical attention, if they could have a preliminary screening test that would give them that information. So um, I, I was persistent and contacting and they were very gracious in contacting me back, discussing their test, um, those kinds of things, um, what goes into it. And, you know, they helped me understand what they were trying to do and um, what they were up against in trying to get their test approved and out. And so right now they're in the, you know, they have the test, we have the test, um, but it's in, you know, kind of that information gathering stage. So they were um, wonderful to send me a few of these tests so that we could test the test, right? Um, because everyone wants to know and have, have a, a feeling of assurance that it, you know, that it works well and, and that type of thing. So um, that's what I will be doing. Um, I will be testing myself. Um, 
and then we're gonna we're gonna look at the results because these you know this is kind of the holy grail of what we're all looking for to release us from our homes our homes that have you know kind of become prisons and be able to get our economy back and functioning and all that kind of thing and and you know give a ray of hope <laughs> to our healthcare workers and our first responders so that's what i am that's what i'm looking to do um and that's how i became kind of involved in this um i do want to mention that my views are only my personal views i am not representing the view of my city i am not speaking in that capacity i am an elected official so i can speak in my own capacity um, but i do want to be clear on on that definition um, i am also in a high risk category um, so you know i i know what people are going through and their concerns um, well let's let's not keep the suspense up anymore. <laughs> Kara, why don't you start taking the test? And then okay. while we wait, it's a 10 minute test procedure. So during those 10 minutes, we can talk more about the background. Right. So this is the test itself. Um, this is what it looks like. And then in the little kit, it's got the dropper so you can suck your blood into there. <laughs> And I'm kind of a wimp, so you guys are all going to, you know, kind of have to cheer me on to, to poke myself. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to be putting it into the buffer. And I'll be putting it into the test and then adding a buffering agent, which is is like sterile saline solution. So if you have contact solution or you have like, you know, your sterile saline wound washer or those types of products. like So that's your sterile buffer that you'll be that you'll be using. And can you hold it up just one more time so I can describe for the viewers uh, what the test has? So as you see the test, it's got uh, the three lines, C, G, and M, and we'll talk more about those. It's got that little square. That's the point where Kara will put a dropper of her blood out of that pipette. And then that thing at the bottom is where she'll drip saline solution, which will allow the blood to go up across the test um, pad so that it will show the lines that will tell us what the results are. Sure. Go ahead. All right. So, of course, got to clean the area. Safety first, right? So. All right. And then I know this one from getting poked. If you have too much alcohol in there, it hurts. <laughs> All right, so I will do a poke. And looking at getting just a little bit of blood, get rid of that first drop because we don't want the alcohol on there. Teeny little bit of blood. And then I'm going to be putting that in the well. Okay. Sorry. You're fine, Kara. This is uh you're braver than I am. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not sure I'm ready to do this, but we appreciate that you're willing to do this live for our viewers. Um, you know, and and actually show people what it is that we're gonna do. You know, one of the things that um Kara is both a um an elected official, an elected libertarian public official, but she's also a stage four colon cancer survivor. Um, and so from a comorbidity or immunocompromised perspective, Kara is at high risk. Uh, in spite of that, what she has been doing is bringing soup to 
members of her community who are uh, self-isolating because they are either positive or presumptive positive for COVID-19. And obviously she's been doing a no contact soup delivery where she's dropping it at the door, but knowing where she's at as far as whether or not she has the infection or has had the infection and now has antibodies will let her know where she's at. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely will. And I mean, this is a big thing. So if you can just describe what you're doing. So now I'm adding the the saline solution, which it's a sterile saline solution. And you're just dropping it in that lower well on the test? Yep. And I just want to put a few drops in. And then that saline solution is actually the buffer that triggers the flow of the blood up onto the test um, indicator. Exactly. There we go. Right. Want to um, make sure I get just a few drops and not a bunch. All right. Do you want to just hold that up if you can? Okay. So, so now can you can see. see that the test is starting to activate. Sorry, you can see my gross blood on there. Oh, <laughs> well, that's uh, that's the reality of the situation. So you can just set that aside, and then that's going to. Oh, we've got about ten minutes until we'll get a result. Um, yeah. You want to lay it flat uh, yep. so that it buffers out. Um, and what's going to happen is that test, when we see it, uh, is going to indicate whether or not uh, there's no COVID-19 infection, whether or not there's been one that's been recovered from, or whether there's an active COVID-19. Um, we also have Cal from uh, ProMed Rapid Testing available to join us. Cal, where are Hi. you? I'll put, I'll put my head in. Um, thank, thanks a lot. Um, Carl, you did a pretty good job there, considering you're not a pro- professional. And and I want to emphasize that at this time, this product is for professional use. It's for laboratory use. However, as Cara has clearly demonstrated and what our intent is or has been for about um, close to 40 days now, is make sure people are aware that one, this exists. And secondly, the the fact that labs, frontline responses, responders, emergency responders, um, cities and municipalities could have had this. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you something here. Look, folks, I have dozens of these boxes. I probably have, most states have. Um, but it's not about trying to get this to individuals right now. However, as Cara has clearly demonstrated, this test as a non-invasive test can be adapted for home use. And of course, that requires a a very uh, simplified version of the instructions. But in order to do that, all we have been asking for for almost two and a half months is one to just look at this and debunk it. Tell us, sorry, this is not true. This is fake. This is, you know, not going to work. And unfortunately, the time that we have wasted and the transparency that we have shared with, you know, of the powers that be, I will say, um, has gone wasted. And now we find that other companies are bringing this to market, which is great. I'm glad that they are able to get something into play. The sad part about all of this is we are almost 40 days now behind. And once this sense of urgency and social distancing came into play, we are now about 16 days behind. And furthermore, we are behind by the potential of having had millions of these tests come into market while we diligently look for um, the vaccine, for alternatives, et cetera. Um, Now, Cara, you probably 
have got your band shown up by now, I'm hoping. Uh, um, we're still about five minutes in. Cal, I have a couple okay. of questions. Just to confirm. Sure. Oh, go ahead. Show us what you have. There you go. Right there, it shows. The control line has been hit. She is negative because the G or the M, so the IgG or the IgM uh, antibodies did not show up in that test. And you now can breathe a sigh of relief. The other piece about this too, so let's bring in the good news and the bad news in this, mm -hmm. is you may have got a positive IgG reading. What does that mean? That simply means that you did at some time have the virus in you. Your body did fight it off, created the antibodies against it. And the truth is you are good to go back into work. Now, again, I've got to be and I have to emphasize I'm not a doctor, but this is a test that is being used now in over 80 countries around the world. The manufacturer is producing over 97 million of these right now in back order and probably has put out into the market about 60 to 80 million of these, so, of which we could have been a part of that. So, so Cal, I've got a couple of questions for you. One, um, sure. you guys are in the data collection phase right now. So you are approved by the FDA to get data from people who either are known to be positive are, for COVID-19. Oh, yeah, we, we are not approved. We are not approved. So you're just by the doing FDA. data collection right now. Correct. Okay. And so this has been brought into health systems. And we have had very um, prominent uh, doctors in our area who've been looking at this. This has gone into infectious diseases labs. However, having said that, I will also emphasize that this was submitted, again, as I, as, as I mentioned, 45 days ago and 17 days ago. This was submitted to state and local authority labs as well, in which it was ignored. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get into why or what, but the fact is that we've been just trying to say, folks, we may have something here. And right now the medical community has responded to us and saying, yes, you do. So if, uh, if this were to be approved by the FDA um, for consumer purchase, is it correct that this would be probably to the consumer under $35? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, and one of the things that, you know, obviously I'm not going to ask you to speculate because you have a company and you're in this process negotiating with a federal agency that um, we're not super keen on right now, but, uh, you know, we don't have a business relationship with them. Uh, mm -hmm. But one of the things mm -hmm. that we've heard uh, through the grapevine is that the FDA and the CDC are very protective of having the information about who is positive and who is negative go through a lab where they can be sure to get the information before the person is sure to get the information. In fact, um, there are reports that we verified that there were at-home testing companies, companies that had sent test kits to consumers. Consumers had taken their own sample and sent them back and the FDA had pulled the plug and ordered all of those samples destroyed rather than allow them to tell the consumers. So the FDA has been very protective of the information. This test, if somebody is positive or negative, they can report the results back to the company and then the company can report those on to the CDC and the FDA. Is that right? Um, well, well, first of all, I... I, I personally don't have any knowledge of, of, of uh, what you had just shared, but at the same time, having said that, our intent with, with this was to just get it to the authorities. Mm -hmm. Let them take this and use it for the frontline responders. I have police officers in my local municipalities who, for lack of a better word, are, are, are just freaking out. Okay. That is the 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 the, you know, the, the most uh, um, sane way I can say it. These are you know the people who go to work every day to defend. Do it 
yet they know the danger they're putting themselves in. And, and uh, departments are going down. We hear about that. We know about that now. Um, our intent with this as well is to work with the powers that be. And again, this is not a political, um, whether it's the this party or that party or, or this push or that push. The bottom line, is, it's very simply, we the people has to be the, the, the primary phrase for any municipality as they bring this to their community. Okay. We have suggested that this can clearly become a data gathering tool. And again, it's not about publicizing or going into people's private information. It's mm -hmm. clearly about showing where someone could go onto a portal, submit their results, and you know that is something that the authorities need to be responsible for at this time. Because the other part about it is, and again, we don't know what we don't know. Um, and we want to make sure people are comfortable in what they're going to share too. However, more important than that, more important than all this, you know, reporting is the fact that this test exists. Right. This test existed. So, and as Kara clearly demonstrated, you know, uh, and, and if you don't mind me, Kara, asking about how long was it before that red control line came up? Under a minute. Under a, under a minute, under a about minute. a minute and a half. Right. And it's now been 10 minutes since the test. Yep. Has anything changed? No, it, no, this looks so like that, the final one. That and Kara, how, how does it feel to know that you are, you don't have any of the antibodies that would indicate an active infection, nor any of the antibodies that indicate that you have already had the virus at some point in the past? Very mixed. <laughs> Um, I mean, I would have loved for it to come up to, and say, hey, you know, you already had it and either your symptoms were so light or you were asymptomatic and, and now you're good to go and all that kind of stuff. Um, I would have really loved that result. I would have hated to have the result to say, oh, you know, <laughs> get ready for your ride. Because, you know, in Minnesota, like, a lot of places around the country were all playing the game of, you know, plague or seasonal allergies. And for women of a certain age, we're playing the game of hot flash or fever. And, you know, and, and that's, you know, it's always, it's always in the back of your mind, you know, and I, and I know I'm not the only person it's, it's always in the back of your mind. Um, so seeing that um, I haven't, I don't have it is great. Um, but that I don't, I don't have the, the antibodies. <laughs> that's, that's tougher to take. So um, I want to thank Cal for, for all the work that your company is doing in developing this test. We want to wish you the best of luck in getting it um, through the approval processes to the point where people will be able to get it. Um, we think it's very important for people to see this, that it's more concrete when you see that these are things that actually exist that are in the world that can provide the information that they provide. And as one of the physicians who's been watching the video has pointed out, this is not the same as the nasal swab test that detects the infection right at the time that you're dealing with it. This shows whether or not you've had it in the recent past or in the more than one to three weeks past. And it is more like, um, in a lot of ways, it seems like this is very similar to a pregnancy test where there are pregnancy tests you could take at a doctor's office that will give you a result earlier in the pregnancy, but there are also tests that you can take at your home or outside of a, a physician's office that can give you results that may be later, but give you that peace of mind yourself. And that's information that you can choose what to do with. Um, you know, it's very simple to interpret and it's, it's both democratizing and empowering that, that information is power and this is a way to give that power back to the individual American so that they don't have to live in fear of not knowing what they don't know. So thank you so much for everything you've done. Um, is there anything that uh, you wanted to share before we let you go? Well, one, I wanna say thank you very much for at least uh, bringing this to, to um, the attention of, of your audience. Um, I will emphasize this again. This is a, 
test that currently is for um, physicians and laboratories to work with. However, this is also going to prove to be the most effective pre-screening tool that is available. This is something that also will help employers in the future as well. And again, we've got to be very careful because we're not trying to deem any agenda on that except for the fact that we know we have the ability to get America back to work or back up and running. And when I say that, I'm not talking about throwing caution to the wind. That's the last thing I'm saying is actually we are doing the opposite. We are ensuring that people can know and verify and they can verify for themselves. Um, so thank you very much. We're excited. We continue to um, to fight forward. We, we, uh, we look forward to working with the FDA as well, you know, we are starting to bring this in. Um, and more excitedly is I look forward in the very near future to the potential that this is something that you will be able to go and pick up from your local pharmacy and that it is very simple and non-invasive. Thank you so much, Cal. Thanks, guys. Um, Kara, thank you for doing this uh, live with people. You know, it, it's it's really something to get out there and show people that this is something that's real. Obviously yeah. you have access to it as an elected official through this data gathering. This is not something that's available to consumers yet. Right. Um, it is, it is different from the test that they're doing, but you know, I just want to share a story uh, with some about somebody who's here in New Hampshire who had had uh, symptoms that were con that were consistent with COVID-19. This person had had tests that showed that they were negative for influenza. They were negative for all of the other things it might be. They were sent to a testing facility, spent two hours waiting to see a physician. And at the point that they finally got to see a physician, they were denied a test. And that's the sort of thing that's happening all around the world. That's uh, all around our country, at least. It's not happening in other countries where they have better testing. And this is something that, that is borderline criminal. The, the fact that we are held up, that what our country has done, what people have done by sheltering in place is by time, right? Flatten the curve and by time. And the time we've bought is being wasted by our elected officials. So we just wanted people to know that these tests are out there. They exist. The only thing that's in between you and this test is the Food and Drug Administration. And so if yeah. you want to sign up for our petition and for updates, visit FDAgoaway.com. We will continue as a political party to put pressure on the FDA to approve this test, not just for physicians, but also to approve it for consumers so that consumers are able to take their own health into their own hands. And um, that's something that I think is very important and it gets lost in the conversation. You know, when I go on TV, when I see people on television, they're focused on what laboratories and state governments can do. And they're not focused on getting it down to the consumer level where individuals absolutely. can get information and make good choices for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and it's also up to the FDA on whether this test can go to doctors and municipalities or whether it can go to you. So it's up to the FDA on that. So, you know, 45 days ago, this existed. This existed. And, you know, we all were blocked from that. We were blocked as municipalities, blocked, um, you know, our, our healthcare systems were blocked and as consumers were blocked. You know, I'm very hopeful that they will get approved by the FDA to get this out to municipalities, hospitals, that type of stuff. I'm also hopeful that they can get this out um, on a consumer basis as well. Um, but you know, that is up to the FDA. The FDA is holding, holding the key right now to this on approval. Other countries have this. Other countries are getting their results. People in other countries are getting their results. They know. They know, just like I know right now. And you could know. You could know. 
right now. You could have, but you don't get to at this point until they get FDA approval. And so I am, I am really hopeful. Um, I would urge people to, yes, sign up for updates because we're going to be, you know, telling you how you can get really get involved and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I also would really urge people to contact your elected officials, contact your city council members, um, contact your mayors, contact your state rep, contact your governors, uh, because their intervention can move this forward. And we really need to, because we, we shouldn't be trapped in our homes. Small businesses shouldn't be dying because this, this test and other tests that are by other companies as well. You know, I don't want to just focus on this one. Um, those tests are available and ready, and we need to be able to utilize them. To, to make it clearer for people, Kara, if, if in your city of Burnsville, mm -hmm. you had a thousand of these tests, you could go out. How many people live in Burnsville? So we have 63,000 people in Burnsville. So if you went to a random sample of a thousand people in Burnsville or even 500 people in Burnsville, just pulled out of the phone book and they all agreed to take this test, you could have those results inside of a day with, you know, your firefighters, your public health authorities, just going around, yeah. collecting the tests, anonymous data, and you would know how far the infection had made it through your community at some level of accuracy. It's not perfect. Right. Um, you know, no test has a perfect accuracy Absolutely. and you know, there's false positives and false negatives and it's only going to detect things that have already been through the infection. So it may not detect early on. There's a bunch of caveats, but of if you had that information, you could make better decisions at the city council level, right? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, like our first responders, um, they could be making better decisions. You know, it would be very helpful for city managers and administrators, uh, county health. Uh, and a hundred of those tests, county health, that, but like, that's less than $5,000 for less yeah. than $5,000. And, you know, and this is one of the things that gets me angry as a political party chair. We just saw them do a $2.2 trillion bailout bill. And we still don't have adequate testing in this country. We're still capped out at barely 100,000 tests a day in the entire nation of 330 million people. And they spent all of that money. And what they didn't spend it on is something where you can get 100 tests for less than five grand and get some idea of what's out there. So I would encourage people, you know, if you are an elected official, libertarian or not libertarian, you know, try and find these tests. Reach out to Kara Schultz. She's easy to find. Reach out to the party. Sign up at FDA Go Away. Get in touch with us. And together we can put the pressure on to make sure these are available so that we can get information. You know, facts are your friends in a pandemic. And it seems like this current federal administration, at least, has been dragging their feet and letting us get the information we need to make good choices and do real risk analysis and real analysis of what is the right thing to do and what's the wrong thing to do. So Kara, I wanna thank you for coming on tonight and taking this test with us live on the air and all the work that you've done behind the scenes to try and help this company and others like it get these tests out there. Um, I wanna thank all the viewers who took time out of their Sunday night to see this. I hope it was uh, enough of a surprise that you're happy and share this video with your friends. Let them know that this is a thing that's out there and that the FDA is what's between the American people and these tests that are available all around the world. Um, with that, thank you for joining us with LPTV. Uh, sign up at FDAgoaway.com for more updates and keep watching our Facebook and YouTube feeds for future episodes of LPTV, town halls and happy hours.